We hear God's voice in music and prayer. In music and prayer, listen for God's voice in these readings. The first is found in Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they no longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. To honor the risen Christ in our midst, we stand for this reading from the Gospel of John. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in a household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. Happy anniversary. I bring you greetings from your 197 partner congregations scattered around the landscape of South Dakota. And especially I bring you greetings from the worshiping community that worships actually in two places, St. Dismas. I spent um, yesterday with them, the men behind bars, and um, they specifically mentioned to be bringing greetings and um, thanks for your support. And on behalf of the men, I thank you, but I also thank you on behalf of 197 partners for your support in this journey that we undertake together in Christ. Siblings in Christ, grace and peace to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Words matter. They matter so much that as we also celebrate the Sunday of the Reformation, we as Lutherans have that as our first leg of the five that we claim to be important. Sola Scriptura, word alone. Words matter, especially for us Lutherans. And as I am a second language uh, speaker, words matter even more because I had to learn each and every word and each and every meaning and when it is appropriate to use one word in one context and when it's not appropriate to use a word in, a, in another context. And so I took the liberty, um, as the reformers do, to translate the text from Greek into my own English version and would like to share it with you because I think there are some markers here that are important as we celebrate together this morning. So Jesus is at this time, as we encounter this passage this morning, left with only a few. Most of the followers that had followed him were scattered because the teachings that he expected them to follow were too hard. So there were a handful of people left, besides the disciples. And in this, in this 
kind of cloud of darkness that starts to come down on the last three days that we now enter of Jesus's earthly life, he also says, I am the light of the world, the light that shines in the darkness and that no darkness can overcome. And that's when he then turns to the Jews that still were there, that still were gathered and says, if you just completely and fully allow yourself to fall back, into the word you are truly emerged into it that's when you fully understand what it means to be encountering the truth and that combination of the word ushering you into the truth will give you true freedom. Well, the handful of people that were standing around looked at him and said, well, we're like carrying Abraham's DNA. We just really don't get this. What do you mean? We're free. We've never been slaves to anyone. And Jesus says, all right, all right, let's do this one more time. When I tell you that the word will usher you into the truth and set you free, I want you to understand that all of your life, all that you will do is really steward your own brokenness. And there is no way that you will ever understand what true freedom is if all you do is usher your own brokenness and steward it. And because that's all that we are able to do because of the sin that has come and crept into our life and which defines us, the only one who can set you free like a slave can be set free only by the sun is the only way you will ever be able to experience the truth is because if the sun will set you free, you are truly free. So there's a few markers in this text that I loosely maybe translate it, um, but nevertheless translated from Greek. There is these big words as the word and the truth. So the word that Jesus refers to is not any word, is not any teaching. The word he refers to is the logos. The word that in the beginning, Genesis 1, flung the stars into the sky and set the moon and the sun and spread out the earth and coaxed up the mountains and dug into the deep. The one that then became flesh, as John says, that was born in human likeness like you and I and that walked the earth and through the word spoke life into people's darknesses. The woman at the well, right, that was too ashamed to come, he has and strikes a conversation, and at the end of the word that he speaks to her, she leaves everything behind and she storms and tells everyone about the word. Or the woman he encounters that has a sick daughter and knows nothing about faith, right, and just starts wrestling with him and she knows everything about dogs but nothing about faith about her about Jesus' faith he speaks the word to her your faith has made you well the same words that we hear at the table right your sins are forgiven is the word is not pastor tim or any of your clergy speaking the word it is the word of god setting you free it's the same word that set the sun and the moon and the sky that healed that fed 5000 people with two loaves of bread and five fish only saying a word. That power of the word is what you taste and see this morning. That's the word that Jesus refers to, not any word. The same word that washed you into the family of God and said to you, you are my child. With you I'm well pleased. That's the word. So therefore, in this word, and this word only, is truth. And this isn't anything objective. We argue these days about my opinion, your opinion, my truth, your truth. We agree to disagree 
This isn't this kind of opinion truth. This is the truth that we confess in the Apostles' Creed, or for that respect, all the creeds that we as Lutherans embrace. The truth that when God says, you are my beloved child, and with you I'm well pleased, then that's what he means. But see, that's where our brokenness comes in. We look at ourselves, and all we see is what's wrong with us. And if you don't, then let me tell you, the moment you leave your house, the world is great at telling you what's wrong with you. You're either too short or too tall, or you're not thin enough, or you're too, too thin, or you wear glasses or you don't wear glasses. You're not performing well. Our kids didn't get an A. They didn't make the A team. They didn't go to varsity. They're only playing junior varsity. Whatever it is, the world's power is to tell us what we're not. And so that's what Jesus means when he says, all we are, uh, um, there's the German now. Um, all that we're capable of doing is we are like, like the woman who sweeps her house, right? And then she has the dustpan, and she keeps up sweeping up the crumbs. And wouldn't you know, I don't know if you sweep, I sweep at my home, but every time I turn around and empty the dustpan, there's new stuff on the floor. That's what Jesus means when he says you can't be free. Just because you carry, uh, whatever, Norwegian DNA doesn't make you Norwegian, my friends. Let me tell you that as a real true German. So that's what he means when he says the word will set you free because all you can store it is the crumbs that you try to scoop up from all that scooping up of your brokenness. There is not a bootstrap long enough or, or strong enough that you can fully pull yourself up by. The only one who can do this is Jesus the Christ that in the waters of baptism reached deeper than any sin and any brokenness and pulled you up and said, what? You are my beloved child. With you, I am well pleased. That is the truth. No matter what anybody else says, you, you are created in my image, God says, and therefore I love you. And the only way that we can fully grasp that truth is if we wholeheartedly trust that promise that we will taste and see and drink when we come to the table. That, my friends, is your anniversary. That, my friends, is how we celebrate the Reformation. That we come to understand that only the Word, God himself, has the power to set us free. And that there's nothing, absolutely nothing, that we can do. But there's also absolutely nothing that will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that comes to us in Christ Jesus alone. Amen. Well, Bishop, we are grateful for your presence with us today, and we know that you have to get over to Festive and preach again here. So on your way, we send you, but uh, thank you for spending this uh, day with us. And on behalf of our congregation, just our way of saying thank you for taking out time out of your busy schedule. Here's a gift from us to you. So Absolutely. again, thanks for our bishop today. <laughs>